Yes, now in case of uh, octahedral complexes, we have three very very important categories. The first one, very simple, M A to B4 type. A, B are, are having the same meaning as in the previous case. They are monodentate ligands. Second category we have is M A A twice B2 or M A A twice B C. B C we know when they are written single, they are monodentate, C is also monodentate. But here A A is a bidentate ligand, but it is that type of bidentate ligand in which both donors are same. The last we have M A3 B3 type A3 B3 type of complex. So let me discuss with examples one by one. Let's take the first case, the most common case in octahedral complexes that is M A2 B4 type. Now in this case, the example which we have here is that of ammonia, sorry, chromium. This is the complex of chromium. Fine. Now in this case, while making cis and trans isomers, usually the question comes that draw cis and trans isomers of this complex. First, if you want to make the cis isomer, let me uh, draw the skeleton of octahedral arrangement first. One for cis and one for trans. Now, why make a cis? Just concentrate on the ligands which are present two times. The same type of ligand, if you give them cis position at one two, then you will get a cis isomer, you will obviously find other ligands present at the adjacent position, there will be more cis positions. If you put them at diagonally opposite position, you are definitely going to get a trans isomer. Let me put the other ligands here. Here it is, sorry, it is ammonia. NH3, 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 fine. Here, let me put cover the vacant positions here by ammonia. Now let us count total cis and total trans positions in each one. You see, this is one cis position at one two position, two same ligands are there. Another cis position, third cis position. So total cis positions here are three. Now, in this case, let's find is there any transposition? Is there any diagonally opposite? Two same ligands are there? No. There is, uh, sorry, there is one position here which is trans. Transposition is only one. These two ammonia are at diagonally opposite positions. Fine. Now, let's count here total cis and transposition. Let me count first the transpositions here. One transposition, two transpositions, and three transposition. Total three are the transpositions. And if you see the cis position, this is one of my interpretation. It will make us simple to find that whether a particular structure is cis or trans, right? So this is one cis position, this is another cis position. So total cis position in this case are two. Fine. So as overall more cis positions are there in this case, so that means it will be a cis isomer. More trans positions are there in this case as compared to cis, so it will be a trans isomer, right? So this is one example of the type MA2B4. Let me take <coughs> the second one in the octahedral complexes. The second type is MAA twice B2 type, fine? Let me take one complex of uh, cobalt here in plus 3 oxidation state. It is cobalt En twice Cl2 plus. Fine. Now, this particular complex of cobalt, there is present En. Right? So, ethylene diamine, it is a, a bidentate ligand and uh, both donors are nitrogen. Fine. So, Let's make it cis and trans forms. In this particular case, this is a skeleton because it's a charged species, so you have to put a charge like this, fine. 
Similarly, it's for its transaction the skeleton plus fine. Now again, I have told you one trick that two same ligands, if they are present in such type, you just put them at one two position. Automatically, it will give you a cis isomer. Obviously, the other two positions by En, En you all know, it is NH2, CH2, CH2, NH2. NH2, CH2, CH2, NH2. This is, I have written the complete, complete structural form of En. Otherwise, in short, you can also write in another way that I will use in the transform. So you see here one cis position, two cis position, three cis position, only one trans position, like that. So it's a cis isomer. Here if you keep them at CL and CL at diagonally opposite position, then it will give you a trans isomer. Fine? You can write EN like this. For simplicity, you can write EN like this also. Fine? So they are covering one diagonal, two diagonal, three diagonal positions. So more trans positions are there. This is a trans isomer in this particular case. Fine? So this is the second example. Now we have the third example in case of uh, octahedral complexes. That is complexes of the type M A3 B3. Right? Now this is a very very special example from examination point of view also. Usually it comes. One example of rhodium complex as well. Here you have Cl3 and pyridine 3. Both, sorry, this is 3. Right? Now both are monodentate ligands, 3, 3. So coordination number, it is obvious, it is 6. Right? So let's draw the two forms in this case. Fine. Yeah. Now, in this case, we have a very special type of isomerism here. See, this is the top position, the vertex of the octahedral, which is shown like this, but actually it is like this. Right? So, if I join this top position with any of the two corners of the square plane in octahedral, then this becomes a particular face of octahedral. Right? Just like, suppose, this is the square plane of the octahedral and here it is the vertex here, right? So if I join these two positions, one and another here, then it will be a face of octahedral, right? So if the three same ligands are present on the faces, one face covered by three CL and the another face is covered by other three ligand that is pyridine, right? Then this is one special isomerism, isomer, geometrical isomerism called FAC isomer or also known as facial isomer because they are covering the faces. Point. The second one, if that particular, one particular meridional face is covered which is within the plane like this, this is within the plane, that means this corner, this and this. This particular three position in the square plane of octahedron are covered by the same ligands.